Welcome to the Screen Edges Podcast. I'm your host, Patrick Alex, here with guest member Jack Hutchinson, Ben Morial, and Luke Wittenborn. And today we're talking about screen agers and the effect social media has on adolescents and teenagers. And we're going to give a quick uh, run through of each guest's opinion real quick. We're going to start with Jack. What do you think? Hi, guys. I'm Jack Hutchinson. I'm a senior at Hopewell Valley Central High School. And today we, like Pat said, we are going to be sc- discussing the effects of screens. And I personally think that it can be something that is well controlled. However, it can be really detrimental to someone's mental health as well as sometimes physical. Hello, uh, I am Ben Morial. I am also a senior at Hopo Valley High, and my reaction to screens would be that I'm okay with it, but they do need to be controlled. And I am uh, Luke Winborn. I'm also a senior here at HVCHS, and I have a different take on this whole situation. I think that social media and screens in general uh, can really connect us, and they give us a great uh, opportunity for us to share our thoughts. So we're going to start off with a personal experience I've had with social media. And about a year ago, I believe I was heavily addicted to my phone and social media in general. The first thing I did after waking up and the last thing I did before going to sleep was to check Instagram, Snapchat, and Twitter. If I had any free time at any point during the school day, I'd be spending it scrolling through feeds. And looking back, it's hard to think that social media was at all beneficial. The first and last thing I did every day was to think about what other people are doing and you know what I'm not doing. I never took the time to really think about how I was being affected by what others were posting. Because as we, as we all know, people will only post the highs of their life and not the lows. Overall, social media made me feel alone. The only thing I saw every day was other people having the time of their life. Seeing the fake emotions of fake people online made my life seem dull and boring in comparison to all the fun they were having. So last school year in February, I finally decided for myself I didn't care what anyone else was doing with their lives. On an impulse decision, I deleted my Instagram, Snapchat, and Twitter account permanently. I knew that if I just deleted the app, I could eventually go back to it and be sucked right back into the bad place it put me. The first week was challenging, most of all because I didn't know what to do with the stints of free time I had during the day. And on the second day, I even found myself unlocking my phone, going to where Instagram used to be, and pressing it without thinking, even though nothing was there. But after about a week of boredom, I realized that during the free time, I could accomplish a numerous amount of tasks to better myself, whether it be through schoolwork, exercise, or getting more sleep in general. After February, my grade shut up, not because I was trying any harder in any of my classes, but because I allowed myself to work on projects far before deadlines, and I could take time to fully grasp concepts. I also exercised more frequently than I used to, and sleep way more than I used to. Maybe deleting all my accounts was just a personal step for me to commit myself to working on who I really want to be, but I think this is true and false. While it was a step for me to take care of myself, I think that's not just me who was experiencing this. Loneliness and depression are the two biggest words that are being used to define our generation. Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, and Twitter could be the culprits, but of course there is no definite way to know. Social media made me feel more alone than I've ever felt, but since I disconnected, I have been more connected with what I want to be. So maybe everyone else should consider taking the same step to delete their accounts. First of all, that is a a wonderful story. Um, I heavily agree with your point that... um, it does affect your performance in school, but I will stand by the point that I think social media can give us connections that we couldn't reach without it. Um, it allows us to share our opinions and our thoughts, as you said, um, and that's important for a human being. We need those connections, uh, even though it, in this case it's through a screen. And listen, technology, it's, it's everywhere it rules this day and age. You know, we all get on our phones when the teacher isn't looking. We film and post everything that happens in our lives. We know we're engulfed in it. But I think that has its upsides because those connections we're creating can help benefit uh, each and every one as a person. Well, I'd actually like to ask you a question. How come you can't have those connections face-to-face? Why does the screen need to be there? Well, I think the screen is a easy outlet um, if you're sitting at home. Too easy. It's too easy. It is too easy, and it, it's very abusive at points. I, I get that, but if you're just sitting at home with nothing, where's those connections go? You're going to have those connections when you're, when you're on that app and you're connecting and liking and commenting on each other's posts. Well, if you're sitting at home, then why don't you just go and talk to people, you know, your friends outside of your home? Well, sure, we'd all love to do that. I'd love to be with my friends face-to-face uh, all the time, but sometimes I'm occupied, I'm at work, um, so if you're at work, why would you be on your phone? If you're not, then you're not working. Well, sometimes there's lulls in the day, 
Um, for instance, I worked at a golf course, and if no one shows up that day, it's a little rainy. Sure, I'll go on my phone, I'll check Instagram, and I'll connect with my friends through texts and whatnot. I agree with that, but I've often been with groups of friends, even an intimate partner, and we're not even paying attention to each other. We're both just on our phones. Yeah, that's that's where I think I'd have to agree with you guys. That's where it crosses the line, I think. If you're in the position where you are you can connect through actual face-to-face contact, then sure, put the phones down, get rid of social media. You don't got to be doing all that, no texting. But if you're in an isolation standpoint with uh, no other way to talk face-to-face, say at home at night when you're going to sleep, all right, I'll just roll through Instagram, check the tweets, see what's going on. I mean, what you're describing is a perfect situation, but the argument I'm trying to make is that social media is so addicting that you can't just say, like, oh, I'm with my friends, I'm not going to look at it at all now, because we all know that we do. Instinctually, I believe you pull out your phone and we'll check your Instagram feed without even being conscious of it. It'll just happen. Does that happen to you guys? Sure. Yeah. So we have a quick special guest, uh, Dave Mazinski, who is also a senior at Hope Valley Central High School. Howdy. He's going to talk a little bit about his experience with social media. You know, um, I've been reading <laughs> a lot on this topic, actually, watching a lot of Joe Rogan. Uh, it's really crazy to think about how we've just been dropped into social media the way we have. I mean, we grew up in middle school, and it was just handed to us. And nobody knew what to do with it. Everyone just went crazy. And nobody really gives a second thought to it that this might not be as beneficial to us as we think it is, you know? Sure, we're staying connected with others that we don't see as much, but at the same time, the amount of time we waste just simply... It's unbelievable, right? One of the stats that we know is that now the average student spends more time on their phone than they do at school every day. I mean, I believe it. I mean, for someone who's not as conscious as me uh i could definitely imagine that you know i do know so i brought up this point earlier and i'd love to ask you about it and i'll I'll bring it up again uh i see uh plenty of upsides uh that come with social media from making uh many connections uh sharing your thoughts and expressing your opinions online uh i just wanted to see where you stand on that as in um, being active and keeping up to date and keeping media? connections and forming connections. I mean, I might not be the person to ask here. I mean, I'm I'm more of a guy who likes to stay out of the loop. I think that ignorance is bliss. Uh, I personally, <laughs> I don't really like to keep up to date with anything like sports related or news related because if it's really important enough, it'll find its way back to me. You know. That's my take on it. That was one of my main points, too, for why I delete social media. Is that something is so important, I'd, I'd find out about it throughout, you know, without looking at Instagram or Twitter. I mean, yeah, funny thing was, when the government first shut down, it took me about two weeks to find out. <laughs> same, Actually, same here. It took me two weeks until I found out. My mom told me. With my CNN app, I found out within the first two minutes. That's for perspective. I mean, how did your life change that you knew earlier? Neither of us really I was. Affected. I was ahead of the game. For uh, what? What, what has changed in your life because of this? What game? Well, the fact of the matter is I like to be engulfed in today's news. Thank you to Dave Mazinski for giving his input on social media and his life. Uh, we're really quick. We're going to go to Ben, who's going to give his opinions on how relationships are affected by phones and social media. Ben. So I'm going to take this back by starting off with uh, me in middle school. I remember using the Vine app a lot, which is quick seven-second videos made to be comical usually. So I was watching Viners like King Batch, Curtis Lepore, and the stuff they were saying about was strongly sexual. And I was 12, 11, and like it really made me to feel like I know more and like I wanted to assimilate to feel like them. So the effects of that when I looked into it is that uh, more than half of 8 through 18 year olds have seen sexual images on the daily on social media and then if you go even further you can look at what this does from uh, a relationship standpoint first off people are distracted when they are together uh, there's also 
stalking is easier now. People check each other's locations. They feel like they can know too much about their partner. There's apps such as Tinder, which make cheating and even just unfaithful behavior, not necessarily actually committing the act of cheating, but it's too it's too easy. It's too close. We're addicted to attention because all we do is check our phones. We want notifications. And uh, also, we can connect with strangers way too easily. We jump to conclusions, and we compare ourselves to other people too often. And all this is detrimental to relationships. As we see, the divorce rate now is already over half, and it's continuing to climb. Yeah, kind of going off what uh, Ben said, I think the bad influences, specifically, like he said, sexually, as well as drug-related. I remember I used to have this app in my freshman year of high school called Fahoto, and I created it, you know, just because I saw everyone else was making one, and it was just constant. I was just bombarded with terms things like sexual behavior drug use etc and it's just stupid in my opinion i mean i don't know i, I always think back I'll, I'll look back like 15 years ago and be like what did high schoolers 15 years ago have to do when all they are consumed by now is technology like pat said we spend more time on our phones rather than actually paying attention in school our attention is constantly fragmented we never get we don't have long-term attention spans anymore and it's just constant stimuli that our brain is feeding into and it's like a drug basically so relating to what you were saying do you believe that drug use is increasing because of social media i don't know if it's necessarily increasing however i think that people are getting exposed to it at younger and younger ages like for example my job, I work with uh, elementary school kids, and I've had them ask me some very provocative things that I would not even think in a million years an elementary school schooler would know about. And I'll sometimes ask them, where do they hear about that? And it's never a brother, it's never a cousin, it's always either YouTube or Instagram or something along the lines of that. That's very interesting because drug use is, of course, on the way down from for adolescents for what it used to be. But I think the issue with drug use and social media is it desensitizes yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. People, it puts it no- makes it normal. Yeah, case. exactly. Mm-hmm. So with all this uh, bad influence um, and all of this, you know, world star, all the bad things on social media, I want to ask you a question, Jack. So think back. If you had never created a social media account, would you feel that you would have been less connected with your peers than – say, which I presume you have made Instagram, Twitter. Yes, I have. Then you've had most with those sites. accounts. Would you feel more connected with or without? Um, I mean, I guess more connected in general. However, I think there's a positive thing that comes along with the connection, also a negative thing. The One of the more negative aspects is I think you always know too much. You can, like, for example, Snapchat. Now you can check when someone's been last on Snapchat and that can lead to some really awkward situations and you're just you never are alone anymore and you don't know how to really process anything because like I said your brain is always you know going back for more of that stimuli that there that social media provides you but it does have some good things people can find niche groups that they never would have been, been able to find before for regarding interests and things of that nature so it definitely has it's positives and it's negatives, but I think it's just a very difficult thing for many people to balance, especially people as a young of, as, of an age as we are. So when I use social media, I feel like I have um, a voice. I can express my my opinions. I can I can share my thoughts, and I don't see any bad stuff as we already discussed. You know, drug use, uh, as Ben uh, said, the sexual part of that, but. I don't see many downsides, and if there are, I think they're heavily outweighed by the upsides of creating those connections and voicing your opinions. Can I ask you a question from the perspective of a father? Sure. So, according to what I've seen on the internet, girls at the age of 13 are sending sexually explicit images to other people. Well, I sure, that is... A very bad issue, and as from a father, too young. from Where a you father, see their favorite celebrities, you know, putting new pictures up on their Instagram, sure, 
and they believe it's normalized, and they want to be like their favorite celebrities. Sure, that, that's that's where we get into the bad influences of that. And yes, and that also is uh, sharing their thoughts and voicing their opinions. And as we know, social media uh, has turned those opinions into um, into poor ones and poor decisions. All right, so that just about does it for the Screen Editors Podcast. Thank you all for listening. Um, we give up our, our final spiel. Let's start with Jack. Uh, what are your final thoughts uh, and wrap up? I'm not oh. going to speak anymore. All right, thank you, Ben. Yeah, I want to make a quick comment. I'm taking a vow sounds for one year, and it starts right now. So I will see you all never. Thank you, Pat. Um, on a more serious note, I think that screens are... And that's all the time we have. Thank you, everybody, <laughs> for coming, and we'll see you later.